Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about graphics tablets, display tablets, and mobile display tablets. I'm going to talk about which one's right for you by discussing the differences and similarities. I'll tell you which ones that I think are the best buys at the moment, and I will constantly update that, so I will put in the description if there is any difference, and if there's any major changes, then I'll do a whole new video, and the link will be in the corner. So I'll try to make this the most up-to-date guide as possible. Also, you can ask any questions in the comments. I do reply to every single question I get. So first of all, I've had a fair bit of experience with graphics tablets. I've been a digital artist for quite a few years now, and I've used the graphics tablets for a long time, and I'm lucky enough to get sent quite a few graphics tablets to review. So I can send you to the individual videos of those reviews each time I talk about them. So what's the big difference between display tablets, just normal graphics tablets, and mobile display tablets? Well, a graphics tablet, which I have here, is just a piece of equipment that you draw onto, much like a touchpad, but with a pen, like so, and you just draw on it, and it will come up on the screen. Now the difficulty comes is that you're drawing on here, but you're looking up at the screen, so the coordination is quite tricky, and it takes a good hour, I would say, to get used to looking at the screen whilst drawing. Now display tablets are better, because they actually have a screen, so you don't have to look up at the screen, you can look down and draw onto a screen, so it's much like a traditional method. Once you get used to a graphics tablet, like this one, there's not a huge jump between this and a display tablet, but when you're trying to draw lines, it's much easier to sort of rotate your body if you're looking at the screen with a display tablet, but as soon as you rotate your body with a graphics tablet and you're looking up at the screen, you get a bit disorientated as to where you are on the tablet. Lots of people, in order to compensate, actually rotate their canvas, so they press R in Photoshop or whatever it is, and it rotates the canvas, and then they draw their lines in the same direction each time, rotating the canvas. Much like if you have a piece of paper and you're sort of moving the piece of paper around in sort of pen and paper techniques. But with a display tablet, you don't really need to do that because you can turn your body to the right position, and it's much easier to orientate yourself. And that, for me, is the biggest difference between the two. Now, some people do ask about digital art, whether they can do it with a mouse. Yes, you can, but it's really, really difficult. In my opinion, I would say a mouse is at the bottom here, then you've got a graphics tablet, and just above that is the display tablet. But there's a huge gap between the mouse and the graphics tablet, so I would really strongly recommend getting one if you're into digital art in any way. The next on our list is a mobile display tablet, like this one here. This is a screen you can draw on, but you can also take it around with you. You don't have to plug it into a computer because it's a computer by itself. And there's only a few options for this, which I'll discuss later. The display tablets and the graphics tablets are meant to be used with a computer, so you have to plug them in to your computer. The other thing that's great about having graphics tablets is you have what's called pen pressure. So the tablet will tell the computer how hard you're pushing. So much like an artist with a pencil pushing harder creates a more clear, firmer line. And in most digital programs, the harder you press, the more virtual ink comes out. And it can also affect the size of your brush as well. So the harder you push, the thicker the brush gets. This really helps it to feel like traditional drawing. So in terms of a buyer's guide, what do you need to look out for? The first thing on the list would be pressure sensitivity. Most of the time it's 8,000 levels, and that seems to be the standard these days. So generally you're going to be looking at that sort of pressure sensitivity. Anything around that number is absolutely fine. You probably won't notice the difference. The next thing you want to think about is the size. And I would say the bigger the better, generally speaking. A lot of them come in 10 by 6 inches. And I think that's about this sort of size, which is a good, comfortable size and great for drawing on. Personally, I wouldn't want to go any smaller than that, but if you're going to carry it around, then maybe. The other important aspect is the pen. And I would say it's very important these days to have a wireless pen. The older models tend to have a battery powered pen that you had to plug in for a while. It charged up. You could even use it whilst it was plugged in, but I'd say go for a wireless pen that doesn't have a battery because there's no need these days. Most graphics tablets have them. It makes your life much easier. You don't have to think about plugging it in and it's one less thing to go wrong. Most other things are just extras added on and they don't make a lot of difference to the performance or your experience. So you might have buttons down the side like this one. And they can be very useful, but generally you're going to have a keyboard next to you anyway. And for the most part, you'll remember the keyboard shortcuts rather than the button shortcuts. This one even has displays telling you what those buttons do, which is nice, but I very rarely use them. Another issue for you might be the weight 
or how thick it is. This one's quite thick, it's quite an old one. This is reasonably heavy as well, but again, it's something that you don't really worry about because it's at your desk all the time. If you carry it around, then yes, you might want to worry about these things, but again, there's not a lot of difference between this and the thinner models. Now, build quality probably is an issue for you if you're going to move it around. So it's worth getting onto forums and speaking to people about the brand that you're thinking about. I'll talk about my recommendations a bit later on in this video. But it is well worth looking at reviews and asking questions of people on different forums who've used them for long periods of time. The one other issue that display tablets have is the drivers. It's well worth checking whether your operating system or graphics card is compatible with the tablet that you want to get. This is mainly an issue for display tablets, and from what I've seen, it's gotten a lot better. And again, look at my recommendations later. It's not such a big problem for the actual graphics tablets, but what you might find if you want to take this into your university is that your drivers might not be compatible with the drivers they've got on their systems, especially if you're using, let's say, Avic and they're using Wacom. You can get lots of issues when two drivers are on the same system, so I would recommend getting the same models that you have wherever you work or wherever you study. Okay, so how much do these things cost and what are my recommendations? Well, just a graphics tablet itself will cost you between 35 and 500 pounds. Wacom are generally considered the brand leaders in all this sort of technology, and that's generally due to their build quality and their driver support, but you do pay for that. There are new brands emerging which are much cheaper, which I'll talk about in a moment. Some of the newer brands are much, much cheaper. Display tablets will range from £250 right up to £2,000 and beyond. So what are my recommendations and which one should you buy? Well, I'll put all the links in the description. They're affiliated links, so you'll be supporting me if you do click on them. But my recommendations are as follows. Firstly, the cheapest graphics tablet you can buy, not display tablet, but graphics tablet, is the Veek A30 at £35. This is a great graphics tablet, wireless pen, good sensitivity, all the things that you'd expect. It's 10 inch by 6 inch, and it is the cheapest that I could find of that quality. I think anything below this price, you're looking at quite inferior quality. Now, just a bit more expensive than the Veek A30 is the Veek A50, and this is my major recommendation. At the moment, it's just under £40, so it's not that much more than the A30, but it has very slightly quicker response time. It's something you won't really notice, but for an extra £4 or whatever, you may as well go for that one rather than the A30, depending on the prices currently, which keep changing. But at the time of releasing this video, it's only four pounds more expensive, so it'll be my firm recommendation. Now, another favorite of mine is the Huion H610 Pro version two. This is slightly more expensive, but its build quality is that much more firmer and more rigid. So if you are carrying this around or you are worried about that sort of thing, maybe you have a bit of a messy desk and you're constantly moving it around to fit other things in, then this is probably a good bet for you. It is more expensive though at £55 or just over currently, but I've heard good things from people about their lifespan and their longevity. Whereas the Veek is fairly untested at the moment and I haven't heard much back from people. The one other thing that the Huion has is tilt support. Now again, this is something you probably won't use that much, but some brushes in Photoshop, let's say, do offer support for tilt, so they will change according to the way you tilt your pen. So those are my recommendations for the graphics tablets. Let's move on to the display tablets. My main recommendation here is the Veek VK1560, and they call it a drawing monitor, and it's currently at 255 pounds, which I think is a very good price. One of the main issues with display tablets is the drivers, but for the Veek, I didn't experience any problems at all. It was plug in and play, which was really nice. Now the cheaper display tablets do have slight issues. The more expensive ones have less parallax, and that's the distance between your pen and the drawing area, the screen thickness in a way. And that can make a bit of a difference. I do prefer working on my Wacom to one of those display tablets. But the price difference is phenomenal. So if you're really into digital art and that's somewhere you want to go in the future, then go for the Wacom. But for those who won't perhaps use it quite so often or can't afford it, then the Veek is a really good option. Now, the other thing I've heard really good reports about is the Huion Canvas GT. That's more expensive at £320, but it still sounds like a very good price. I haven't had a chance to go on that yet, but I have heard really good things about it. So the huge jump in price to my next recommendation is the Wacom Cintiq. And I will actually recommend this because it still is 
a bit better than those other display tablets. Well, it's a lot better in fact, but it's so much more money. You're looking at about £1,500 for one of these as opposed to 250 But the experience is really nice. It is very similar to drawing on a piece of paper or whatever. The build quality is very good and the drivers are all stable because they're from Wacom, which is the leading brand. Now lastly, if you're an artist on the go and you've got lots of money to spend, then maybe you can go for something like the Mobile Studio Pro. The great thing about this is that you can bring it back and plug it into your computer and therefore use it like a Cintiq. That does get a tiny bit fiddly because you have to sort of get it all out and put it on your stand and everything like that and plug it in, but it comes with the added advantage that this is a computer in itself. So you can move around with this and do all your artwork out and about. But that's not without its limitations. If you're using this out and about, and you're used to sort of keyboard commands, then you do rely a lot on the buttons. And these are programmable buttons, but you never have quite enough buttons for all the controls. This is fine for something like Photoshop or Critter. When I'm using it with Blender, then I feel like I have to set up my file before going onto this and doing it mobile. So let's say I'm doing a bit of sculpting. I feel like I have to set up my models first, and then I can go off, maybe sit in front of the TV whilst I'm sculpting away or something like that. So it's not without its drawbacks, it's not as good as sitting on your computer. And if you're just trying to do a quick practice session, then I would still suggest pen and paper. Because there's still the faff of setting this up and having a charger and all those other things that you need to go with it. Are there any alternatives to this? Well, yes, there are. There's things like the Surface Pro. There's the iPads, of course. I haven't had a chance to play with many of them. I do know that the Surface Pro isn't quite as good as this by any means. And that's from people that I've chatted to who've used it for this sort of thing. If you are getting something like the Surface Pro, you have to go for one of the really highest spec models, which ends up being a similar price to this. So I think you're better off going for this. The iPad, of course, is the other contender. I've heard very good things, but they're still not using it in industry over these. So I would say that kind of speaks for itself to a degree. And the iPads are pretty expensive. Not as expensive as this, though, so that might be an option for you. So that's display tablets, graphics tablets, and mobile display tablets. All the links for these different things will be in the description. And do remember to read the comments and look at the description itself, because I will update this if there's any changes. And if you have a question, then comment and I will get back to you and read the other comments because there's lots of people that comment with their own opinions and they've used these different things. If you have used any of these different things, then comment below and help people out. Also, you can get across to the Discord server and ask people there. It's like a forum for digital artists. You can chat to me there or you can join in some of the competitions. We've got some up on the board at the moment. The current competition is Christmas, but do look on that server for the current competitions. There's always one running. You can also visit my website. The links are in the description and it's got lots of courses and tutorials on there which may help you. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.